In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to fix your rib flare here in seconds, but then also teach you the required strategies to maintain that fix so it's not constantly coming back and flaring out of control. Reach! So you may be wondering, how are you gonna fix the rib flare in seconds, but then you know also keep it from coming back? Well, we're gonna do that by using the Reach three R's. What are the three R's? Glad you asked. R1 is going to be reset, so we're going to press the reset button on the muscles, causing some imbalance. Number two is going to be regain, meaning we're going to regain normal motion. And then lastly, we're going to cement those changes with the third R. The third R is reinforce. So we're going to strengthen that balance to keep it that way. First, let me give you a little bit of context of what we mean about rib flare. Now, we don't mean that you have some weird structural abnormality of your chest, which most people don't have, where your ribs are just hanging out there. We're not talking about that. We're talking about rib flare as a position. So what does that mean anatomically or based on body and structure? All right, so typically we see what rib flare is, is when people stand with a really heavily arched spine, sometimes called an anterior pelvic tilt, what tends to happen when you're opened up like that is that the ribs here look like they're flaring, right? And so aesthetically you can see that, but then functionally that can create some problems. It creates some imbalances in the hip flexors, the low back can create some decrease in performance if you're an, an athletic or an, an athlete or a, a lifter, and then also can increase your risk of back pain and injury. So Really, to fix rib flare in seconds, really what you do is that if you're stuck here in this open position with the ribs flaring and the belt lying down, all you gotta do is close that. So if you think of this as like an open scissors position, you just gotta close the scissors, right? And this is also called a neutral spine or neutral pelvis. It's really not that difficult, but the difficult part comes in maintaining that because if you are habitually tight and stuck into this position, it's not so easy just to say, well, get connected or close the scissors. All right, so what muscles can be tight that cause or, or keep you in this uh, rib flare position? Well, typically it's the low back muscles through here. So we have these pipe or sausage muscles here called your rectus spinae or lumbar paraspinals. We have your QL muscles through here. And then actually your lats, which control your shoulders and your arms, those actually blend down into your low back. And all those muscles when they get tight, there's a couple other ones in there too, but they help they can cause an arch in your low back here and create a lot of extension and compression which if you feel those muscles back there they're tight like steel cables that's fine for a short period of time but if you're constantly walking around day to day like that that gets tight and aching and cause some problems the first strategy is r1 which is going to be of the three r's which is reset we're going to press the reset muscle we're going to press the reset button on those muscles all right, so we're gonna take our handy dandy reach lacrosse ball that we have here, any lacrosse ball, or you know, if you have a dog toy or softball, something else, tennis ball can work. This is really simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna roll around through those tight muscles to help to loosen them up. So if my spine's right here, my ball is on right in the outside of my spine, this was the first spot on those pipe muscles. Now I'm gonna move a little more lateral or outside in my flank into that QL and do the same thing and roll through there. But really when it comes down to it, all I'm gonna do is just roll through my entire low back, not really worrying about the anatomy and the muscles, really just finding those tight spots, rolling through them, and if you find a nasty spot, hold there, breathe through it for about 30 seconds. Now that we have reset the muscles, next we're gonna go into the second R, which is gonna regain motion. So typically, you know, from a lot of, of sitting, which sitting's not bad, but how often we do it, we tend to conform to these rounded positions with technology and so on and so forth. And that can create a stiff upper back. So when you have a stiff upper back, what can happen is, is that you can't straighten that mid back to stay tall and proud. So if this is super stuck like a turtle shell, how do you get tall? Well, there's a couple things you can do, and one of them tends to be you can stick out your butt. So you can make up for the lack of bending or extension in your mid back here by sticking your butt out. But what inadvertently happens is that we're having a ton of arching in our low back and that creates that rib flare position or all that muscle tightness you get on the back there. So what can we do to help support that now that we've released these muscles, reset them, we want to make sure that we can elongate or get some motion in our mid back to reduce that stress from just going back into that low back. So what we're going to do is mobilize our mid-back or thoracic spine using a chair. 
All right, so this is gonna require a chair. So if you have a, fold uh, a uh, folding chair is great. If you don't, a foam roller can work. If you don't have a foam roller, think about the edge of your couch. Uh, if you have a, like a sofa or a couch that has a rounded armrest on there, you can do the same thing on there. So really what we're using this for is a fulcrum. So this fulcrum is basically a hinge point or something we can bend our back over. So typically this mid back is pretty darn stiff. So yeah, you can kind of proud chest and do an exercise like this and that can be helpful. But to really get in there and get some motion, we can use this chair fulcrum here. So our thoracic spine is basically wherever our ribs are. So it's down here to right below the neck. So we're gonna start at that lower spot. So I'm gonna scoop my butt back. And all I'm gonna do is hug my head and simply lift my elbows up. And now as you can see me, I'll remove this hand. And so all I'm doing is like a reverse crunch. So instead of crunching down, I'm reverse crunching over the chair and then return. I'm gonna do a few repetitions here. You might get a few snap crackles or pops, which is totally fine. This means you're getting motion. And then I'm gonna slide my butt forward just a bit so, I, so the fulcrum or the chair goes higher up my back. Same thing. I'm gonna do a couple repetitions here. I can sink into it a little bit more by breathing out and even letting my head drop back like this. Good. And I'll slide my butt forward a little bit more, and all I'm gonna do is keep working up my back. If you find a super stiff spot, work at that spot. We press the reset muscle. We press the reset button on the muscle by rolling out with the lacrosse ball. We just regain some normal motion of our mid-back by using thoracic extension over that chair fulcrum or mid-back extension. And then lastly, we're going to reinforce these changes with a proper strengthening and stability exercise to really cement the changes over time. So this part's really important for sustaining long-term changes. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go in what's called a crook lying position. So all that is is we lie on our back and rather than just legs straight, which typically here, if you have a stiff mid back and some rib flare, just lying here alone, you're gonna be in a little bit of that rib flare position where your back is arched. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear that space here underneath my back. How do we do that? It's really easy just by bringing your feet flat and bending the knees and then actively thinking about pushing the small of your back to the ground or think about pulling your belt buckle up towards your nose. Take your fingertips, put it underneath there and just smash your fingers and then keep that remove the fingers. So now we're in this connected crook line position where now that was the scissors, remember the open scissors here? By pushing the small of the back down, we're now closing the scissors, rib flare is gone, and now in this position, I can start to train it. So now that I hold this position, and if you have some issues with your neck doing this, just put a pillow underneath your head to help hold it up. That can help, especially if your mid back is stiff. And then lying here, all we're going to do is we're going to work on trying to control maintaining this position. And so how we can do that is by reaching overhead. So when you're reaching overhead, there's a lot of muscles working here, but your lats are also a part of it. And we just release those lats with the lacrosse ball, so it should be a little bit easier. But if we don't know, if we have tight lats and we don't know how to control this, when we reach up overhead, it's going to cause us to arch our low back. So we need to be very mindful that we're keeping the low back pushed toward the ground, and then very simply, we're gonna reach overhead as high as you can go, fighting the urge to arch the low back. Reach, and then bring it back. Reach as far as you can, and then bring it back. If you can only reach this far, that's fine. What we don't wanna see is reach overhead, and you start doing this stuff like this, okay? Next, we can upgrade it by simply grabbing a weight. So anything around your house can work, or if you have literal weights, you can do that. This is a 13 pound kettlebell. I'm gonna hold this up over, overhead, bend the knees, feet flat. I'm gonna smash my fingertips with my low back, keep it connected, get rid of that rib flare. And then very simply, I'm gonna reach overhead and return. Good, make sure you're breathing. Try to breathe into your abdomen here, not up into the chest. When you do this, you can feel your core working. And if you have a stiff mid back, you'll also feel it between your shoulder blades as well. That same area where we worked on the chair. Good. And then lastly, to get the core involved even more and to make the changes even better is we can add the core by simply lifting the legs up in the air. So what we'll do is we're going to take the same bent knee position and we're just going to bring it up like this. So it's a 90, 90 position of the knee and the hip. 
up like this. Again, make sure your back is pushed against the ground. Think about maybe scooping your tailbone up toward the ceiling. Rib flare is gone, and now my core is on having to hold my legs up. We want to make sure to breathe in our belly here. Good. Reach up overhead, grab that weight, and same thing applies. I'm going to reach overhead. Make sure I'm breathing. And bring it back. Breathe. While reaching overhead, it's a lot harder than with your legs up. And make sure we're not, as we're reaching overhead, losing the low back where you can see my legs are dropping. This is not good. This is just driving more of that rib flare and that low back tightness. Okay, so now we just went through the three R's for how to fix your rib flare. We have the pressing the reset muscle on the buttons, regaining motion, and then reinforcing with good strength and stability. We did all that. So you can fix rib flare, I mean, in seconds, right? But how do we really maintain those changes with our everyday life? I'd recommend going through this every day, maybe even twice a day. Give it at least uh, you know, two weeks, if not more. Maybe take a picture of yourself and see if you can see from before and after changes. All right, if you like that last exercise we did there, that actually is an exercise we love to use that works the core ABCs. Uh, a standing for alignment, B for breathing, C for control. So this is a way we train our true core. And if you're interested in training your true core to get rid of that rib flare for good and even decrease pain and increase your performance, we recommend our core strength and stability foundations course, which you can find in the description below. And there's a little promo code there for you as being our YouTube subscriber. All right, lastly, if you like this content, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let us know what you'd like to see because we can rip out anything regarding these three R's. So if you like this concept and what we did today and you want it for something else, shoot us a comment below.